Here we will take a look at a proof of Pythagoras theorem that is commonly offered in textbooks. It's not one of the simplest uh, proofs. There are proofs which are more elegant and simple, but textbook as textbooks are, uh, they insist on these proofs. Anyway, so we'll do only the broad brushstrokes of this proof because the proof by itself is very long. But if we remember the main steps, the strategy, then filling in the details should be easier. Otherwise, most people end up mugging this proof without understanding it. So here is a right angle triangle given to us and we are going to construct squares like this on its sides. Why? Because Pythagoras theorem deals with squares of sides and hypotenuse. And if we construct squares like this, then their areas will be related to square of these sides. Then we'll do a construction from the vertex where the 90 degree angle is formed. I have dropped a perpendicular to the hypotenuse and then extended it till it meets the other side of the square that we have constructed. Then I'm going to construct a triangle in one of the smaller uh, squares so that its area is half of the square that encloses it. Then I'm going to do a deformation of this triangle. So I'll take this vertex of the triangle and I'm going to move it without disturbing the other side, the base. So the base is remaining the same, but the vertex is moving parallel to it. If I keep doing that, then I get two triangles. One is shown in dark green, the other in light green. The two share the same base and the two are enclosed within two parallel lines. So they have the same height. So same base and same height, they must have the same area. Then we'll do a rotation of this triangle. So I'll take this triangle here and rotate it about this point by 90 degrees so that this side here would come and fit on the other side. Now the two sides that I am uh, talking about are parts of a square. So they, they are bound to fit. Same thing happens here. This side of the square and this side of the square are the same. So this triangle would exactly fit in the position shown. Then I'm going to do one more transformation. So here again, we are doing the same thing. We are uh, moving a vertex parallel to the opposite side, the base, and therefore its area will not change. And suppose we decide to you know, place it here. So the area of the triangle has not changed. And therefore, uh, we still have two triangles with identical areas. But if you look closely, these triangles are parts of two quadrilaterals. Say this uh, triangle here is going to have half the area of this square. And this triangle here is going to have half the area of this rectangle. So if the triangles have the same area, twice of that is the same. And therefore, the area of this square and area of this rectangle are identical. You might have already guessed what I'm going to do next. I will be constructing a triangle in half of this square using its diagonal. And then I'll start deforming it again the same way, moving the vertex parallel to the opposite side, the base. And therefore, I'll get two triangles like this which share the same base, which are enclosed within two parallel lines, so same height, so they have the same area. Then I'm going to rotate this triangle about this point so that this side of it comes and sits on the other side of the square. Or you can look at it like rotating this triangle about this point till this side of the square comes and fits on the other side of the same square. So still the two triangles have same area. Then deformation time again, we start deforming this triangle so that its vertex moves parallel to the opposite side, the base. So we'll again start getting a triangle which is of different shape, but essentially the same area. So let's place it here. So now we have two triangles with identical areas. This is having half the area of this square while this triangle has half the area of this rectangle. So triangles had the same area, twice of that would remain the same and that is nothing but the area of this square and area of this rectangle. So we have proved that area of this square is same as this rectangle and area of this square is same as area of that rectangle. So the sum of these two squares, the areas of these two squares will be the sum of areas of these two rectangles or the area of this bigger square. So square of this side, a square, plus square of this side, b square, is square of 
this side c square that is pythagoras theorem 